grand jury indicted John Whitrock as the so-called fishing hat bandit. Prosecutors say Whitrock's total take from 21 bank robberies was $87,000. But is he the only fishing hat bandit? Tonight, there are new questions about the motive and methods of the fishing hat bandit. The Fox 9 investigators have uncovered the pattern that had the FBI baffled for more than a year and a half, and that's not all they found. Here's Tom Lydon. Well, he may not have had much of a disguise, but the fishing hat bandit had a unique M.O. Tonight, a look at a special kind of criminal profiling, as fresh as the latest TV crime drama. And this story also has a cliffhanger, as you'll hear for the first time from the prime suspect, John Whitrock. It was a roll of the dice every time the fishing hat bandit walked through the door. And he knew it. It's the gambler's fallacy. I've won every time I've played. Why should I stop playing? The game lasted two minutes, max. The take, anything from a measly 326 bucks to 12 grand. But for the fishing hat bandit, there was a method to the madness. A subconscious roadmap. A puzzle revealing itself with each of the 24 banks and credit unions he robbed. This is the area in which the offender hunts banks. Criminology professor Lee Gilbertson... This is just too amazing. ...believes he's found the hidden pattern. And I can draw a line around this, two to three block, just like I did for the area of awareness. Look pretty good? A remarkable correlation that's led him to an even more intriguing hypothesis. But that means if he is telling the truth, then... There's a copycat out there. At the request of the Fox 9 investigators and with the help of the Spatial Analysis Research Center at St. Cloud State, Professor Gilbertson charted the fishing hat bandit's territory. This area we're going to call the hunting ground. The hunting ground stretched from Roseville to Northfield with the major cluster in the southern suburbs. From Edina to Egan with heists along the way in Bloomington, Richfield, Invergrove Heights and Highland Park in St. Paul and always near easy freeway access. He throws one out there in Northfield. He throws one out there in Roseville and tries to create the appearance of randomness, but it still becomes part of the pattern. Crunching the dates and times of the robberies in a database, Gilbertson uncovered a felonious schedule the bandit kept to, like clockwork. This guy's got banker's hours, no pun intended. Among his findings, the fishing hat bandit almost always held up banks on Wednesdays at midday. Thursday afternoons and Friday mornings. Friday is especially significant. It's the day he was most likely to hit the same bank twice, which he did on at least six occasions. And the bandit was selective about his dates, using only half the calendar, a pattern Gilbertson can now predict. Likelihood is, if he had not been arrested, that tomorrow morning he would rob another bank. While Professor Gilbertson so analyzed the targets, we're all creatures of habit. His colleague, psychologist Barry Schreiber, psychoanalyzed the suspect. It's very difficult for people who are serial bank robbers to stop and say, well, it's enough. Schreiber has studied bank robbers for more than two decades. We sought his help before the fishing hat bandit was caught, which Schreiber said then would only be a matter of time. From his perspective, he's been lucky, perhaps even charmed, but that will end. Um, as surely as he continues, um, there will be a day when things don't line up for him. Just two days later, the FBI reeled in the man they would later identify as the fishing hat bandit. 56-year-old John Whitrock, whose double life came to an abrupt end on live television. He was, uh, in a sense, I think, relieved that uh, the chase was over. By the time the FBI raided his Burnsville townhome, Whitrock had already confessed to 19 of the 24 robberies. And no one had a clue. Not his family, not even his girlfriend of 14 years. It's a pretty lonely, isolated man um, who doesn't have significant attachments. I'd be, I'd be pleased if you found someone who said, yeah, he and I were great friends. We've been friends for 20 years. Fox 9 investigators went back further. Born in Wisconsin Rapids, the family left when Whitrock was only three, moving to Wheaton, Illinois. 
Friends say he never missed a chance to tell people he went to high school with comedian John Belushi, which he did. But while Belushi was the class clown, Whitrock was always the enigma. He has passable social skills. Um, he has a, a live-in a companion. Um, he passes socially with neighbors. But he did have a bizarre rap sheet. Most recently busted in Burnsville for shoplifting men's hair coloring solution. And while the fishing hat bandit was never seen with a weapon, Whitrock once pulled a gun on a guy in the restroom of an American Legion in Apple Valley. And long before he was connected to fishing hats, Whitrock was wearing a wig. Egan police arrested him twice while cross-dressing, although he was never charged with any crime. Shriver believes Whitrock's real turn-on was gambling. The Fox 9 investigators have learned he was a member of Gamblers Anonymous, even had himself banned from Mystic Lake Casino. On one night alone, Whitrock bounced three $200 checks there. To make matters worse, in recent years, the one-time financial analyst had been unemployed. The red dots are places where he worked. And that's he where Professor Gilbertson security. comes in again. He's reasonably familiar with the small buffer region. In most cases, it's two to three blocks. He mapped out Whitrock's life story, the places he lived, where he worked, where he played. Here's his places of employment. There's the casino. Even where he got in trouble with the law. Loitering, shoplifting, particularly at Egan, where he was arrested or detained seven times. The result, Whitrock's comfort zone what profilers call his area of awareness. All we've got to do to look at this geographically is put the area of awareness as an overlay on top of the hunting ground. Two patterns, the Fishing Hat Bandit's hunting zone and Whitrock's area of awareness have a 95% match. But it's the other 5% that fascinates Professor Gilbertson. Here's an interesting dilemma in this analysis. 24 banks have been robbed. He has admitted to 19 of them. What's that tell you? Copycat. There's a copycat out there, right? Because this has been in the media. Somebody saw it and said, hey, I can pull off a couple of heists. You're going to blame it on this guy. They're looking for him. Already facing a life prison term, why would Whitrock lie about a half dozen robberies? And what about that bank robbery that Professor Gilbertson predicted? Oh, goodness. January 28th. What day is that? Friday. It's tomorrow. Friday. Mm -hmm. Then tomorrow, I would sit at First National Bank of the Lakes or American Bank during the morning hours till about 11.30 and wait for him. Those are the two banks most likely to be robbed again. He came very close. It was 11.30, but one day off, January 29th at the TCF in Uptown. Two customers tackled 44-year-old James Weissman who confessed to robbing two other banks last month to support a cocaine habit. And then there's the SpongeBob bandit, who uses a SpongeBob shopping bag and wears a Green Bay Packer cap. He's already robbed six Metro banks at gunpoint. Are they the copycats? Responsible for crimes the fishing hat bandit is taking the rap for? The only other man with answers is John Whitrock, who sits in the Sherburne County Jail. Whitrock wrote back to the Fox 9 investigators after we requested an interview saying, I have one word, with him. What's in it for me? Also, I think my personal life is really rather boring. And what I allegedly did to gain fame is nothing to brag about. The fishing hat bandit may have worn many hats. But for now, John Whitrock isn't letting anyone into his head. I think the fishing hat has been destroyed. The fishing hat bandit was connected to a total of 24 bank and credit union robberies. But in today's indictment, John Whitrock is charged in only 22 of the cases. Why the discrepancy? We wondered that too. The U.S. Attorney's Office had no comment. For the investigators, Tom Lydon, Fox 9 News.